this meeting is uh, a biannual, uh, I'm sorry, you ready? Okay, all right. So biannual, we have to do two meetings for um, the community in regards to the construction for mills. So this is an effort to meet that obligation and, and or exceed the obligation. Um, this meeting tonight primarily will be an update on where we are and where we're going. Um, and I apologize, I'm gonna turn this off because if I don't, it's gonna start dancing the jig. In attendance tonight will be Brown and WDND architect firm. So very technical questions that need to be answered outside of uh, where I'm at as far as uh, explanation of where we are and where we're going. Uh, Brad can chime in and help from a technical perspective. As of today, um, we are moving steadily along with the foundational pieces of all three facets of this job. Uh, the very first part of it will be the classroom expansion here to the east side of the main building. Um, the construction crew was here at one o'clock in the morning pouring the slabs for this building. Uh, due to the heat and uh, making sure that people are safe and that the drying time of this concrete can be taken care of expeditiously, um, they did it in the middle of the night, if you will. <clears throat> um, and they did a wonderful job. It'll take roughly seven days for this slab to cure before they start basically dealing with the other aspects of it. So the encouraging part about that is when you see a slab being poured, all of the underground pieces as far as plumbing, fixture, I mean all the plumbing pieces, mechanical things that are in the ground are actually being completed and taken care of before that slab is pulled. And that we're in a good place to basically make sure that we don't have any problems from the pool. Uh, additionally, we'll move back to the auditorium, I mean to the arena. Um, they are currently, uh, uh, they've drilled piers as far as support pieces uh, for the building itself to go. They're in the process of pouring footings and concrete for those pieces. And hopefully over the next week or so, we'll be in a position to pour a slab back towards the arena piece. So we're moving steadily along with where the construction we wanted to be as far as uh, taking care of um, the ground aspects of these jobs. Last but not least, <clears throat> the softball field, we had to bring in some more field soil to basically uh, offset what our soil content was uh, on that platform. As you know, um, the site used to be what we referred, affectionately referred to as a poop pond. Um, and so we had to go back and refill it with good soil. And so they're compacting that soil now <clears throat> and getting that taken care of in the process. They're also setting um, the framing of digging footings for the new concession stand that's on the visitor side of the field. So that's kind of bringing us up to date on where we are. Uh, I'd like at this point in time to share with you targeted dates so everybody's on the same script. From a master schedule uh, perspective, uh, the targeted time frame to have the classrooms completed are July 31st, 2025. The arena targeted time frame is August 31st, 2025. The softball field uh, targeted date of completion is October 11th, 2024. So those are our dates that we're trying to adhere to and all of our tentative scheduling as far as what's being coordinated by the construction firm and their subs to get done are, are plotted and we're moving forward with. Okay. Um, there have been no major adjustments to the original plans that was presented and approved by uh, the district and the federal court. And we're here and strictly to those plans and we're moving forward. Uh, at this point in time, I'll open up for questions or discussions providing anyone has them at this time frame. Any questions? I started. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so, with the softball field attended uh, October, is that also as part of the concession stand, business side concession as well? And would it be functional for during the season, football season, or not? Do you know what? That is the intent. Uh, and I don't know anything different than that at this point in time. Based on all of our initial conversations and the way we've been planning and moving, is that when they cut the softball field loose, the, the little intricate details as far as locks and mechanisms and right. those pieces so that we can make sure that we've got a solid uh, process in place. I think today was a uh, detailed conversation over the storm shelter um, and a roll-up door as far as capacity and people, as far as egress and moving people throughout. So uh, it's been some really captivating conversations uh, throughout this process. 
Everyone's been attentive. The construction crew has been great to work with. Um, the subs have been great to work with. I mean, everybody that's been involved has been eager um, to get here. So the enthusiasm is good, uh, which leads to positive out, uh, outcomes for us. And so that's all we can do is just keep <coughs> pressing the gas and trying to get it. Great question. I know that's not the only question. <laughs> Y'all like, man, it's time to go home. All right, so barring, barring that we don't have any um, catastrophic things to take place. We're right on target as far as budgeting goes. The biggest things that were concerns for us uh, was what would we find in the ground? <laughs> Sitting on a, on, a, on, a, on a granite rock, if you will, uh, and how much rock we would have to basically cut through from an allowance standpoint. And for right now, we seem to be fairly safe. Right, so um, the things that are basically touching for us are, are technical pieces, so for example, Light, making sure the lighting systems are going to mesh with the previous lighting systems that's here and they tie in appropriately. And so we're working through those pieces. Uh, whether or not the fire system plugs in correctly uh, with the existing fire system or camera systems and the rest of the systems throughout the building. Uh, because we want to be uniform in that and not have separate systems uh, where you have separate maintenance calls as far as trying to maintain the system uh, and keep it moving forward. So I think we've done a good job of trying to mitigate that limit our cost and exposure in that regard. So, so for example, fire system is the same fire system. We just expand the pump. And then whatever networking capabilities that need to be expanded upon, we're doing those too. And that's been minimal cost thus far, but it is some necessary pieces that got to take place. Right, and just for your consumption, <clears throat> we meet every other uh, Thursday morning for what we call OAC meetings. Uh, that's where the architect group, the construction group, any subs as far as any of the opportunities that we're working on that time frame from a detailing perspective, we meet those mornings to talk about those details. Uh, additionally, we meet uh, Tuesdays at 3.30 for all things construction throughout the district. Um, that's our opportunity to bring those to the table. Um, the PCSS team is there, the architects are there, uh, the majority of our contractors are there, and we're talking about all projects. Um, so. And, and it's open to the public, so anyone is able to attend that meeting and come in here and talk about, ask questions about the things that we're doing in the district. We're trying to be very transparent in the stuff that we're doing and uh, make sure it occurs to our stakeholders and make sure they have access to what they need to have access to. Where is the meeting at? These meetings are held in the boardroom of the district office there. Yes, sir. At 3.30, we sit around the, the big table, if you will, and uh, we put everything on the table. What about the eight? The nine o'clock meeting is every other Thursday. Today um, was a meeting day. Next week will not be the week after that. Uh, there'll be another meeting. Uh, in the off weeks, uh, we're at a different site. Currently, that site is Silver Hills, working that on Thursday mornings at nine o'clock. Hopefully, we'll be done with Silver Hills uh, by the end of uh, July. I would encourage everybody to watch the district's YouTube videos on their YouTube uh, site and watch the construction videos by the construction manager. Yes. And those videos are sent to the communications department. They upload those videos for anyone's consumption to take a look at it. Most of the time lapse and the construction crew do, does that for us so the sort of folks can be cognizant of the construction process. One, and it's really not a construction question. It's more of a, uh, I guess, a furniture, well, not even a furniture, a fixtures question. Because a lot of people have asked me about this. The banners that are in the Mills Middle School deal, those all belong to Mills High School. Is there a way, or is there a plan to get all of those over to the ring? I'm gonna say yes at this point. I think the challenge when we first started this, uh, 2018 when we got here, there was not a plan initially for all of the artifacts, if you will, the trophies and that kind of thing. Um, we were fortunate enough when we redid the hallways for um, a safety perspective that we were able to erect the uh, current casing that you see now. Um, 
it was not an oversight to move those flags. Um, I just think at the time frame we were trying to figure out what to do, and then we were going through this process, it just made sense to hold off until we get the new facility taken care of. And then at that particular point in time, we can move on with that. Right. But then I'm going to solicit your help as far as placement. By all means. Because, <laughs> I mean, I just, I know it's, it's pictures of, of state championship teams and stuff like that. that I mean, they're immortal. So they want to know if they're going to have their pictures up and stuff like that. So. I mean, absolutely. Um, and, and so it, I almost speak a little bit differently to that because I think one of the pictures over there is mine. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you so, go. Yeah. That's right. So. I just want for the record, I just <laughs> there's a plan to move it, which is why you have the case in your place that you have. And then moreover, you want to make sure that you're consistent with what we're doing with the rest of the secondary mm -hmm. schools in the district. Um, Maumelle has some really, really, really nice uh, casing for trophies and memorabilia. Um, we're going to do the same thing everywhere else um, and make sure Silver Hills has got some of the same things. So we'll, we're trying to make sure we're consistent across the board. Sure. That, I, mean, I know that's not the only question you got. Now, I mean, that's pretty much it because you answered about the timeline. I mean, I see construction company that have fences up around here. I mean, I haven't looked at back there because I haven't been back there lately. But it seems like everything is, is on point. So you said July 31st, 2025, August 31st, 2025, and October 11, 2024. For all of those? Classrooms, July 31st, 2025. Arena, August 31st, 2025. Softball, October 11th, 2024. Yeah. One thing that's, that's actually pretty cool about uh, the construction here at Mills right now is the storefront that's out back by the back door as you get ready to walk into the competition gym. You can physically see the construction up close basically going on. Okay. So what's cool is sometimes when I come through, I catch the kids watching the bulldozers and the workers basically doing their thing, and then even administrators are stopping and paying attention and getting a glance of what's going on. So it really, really makes for uh, a good time as far as construction goes for folks to be able to see that. Now, when the building comes up and it's erected and we snatch that storefront completely out, <clears throat> like we've done on the east side of this building, yeah. the storefront is gone. Yeah. School's <laughs> gone, so we need to basically yeah. board that up because they're getting ready to start, hopefully, in, in 12 weeks or so, we'll start to have, I think September, maybe 16 weeks, we'll have steel starting to be erected out here and you'll start to see it get framed up. Right. So once it starts to frame and we start to put a scan on the building, if you will, and you start to put the exterior scan on, then it'll really, really move fast after that. And the dates that you're mentioning, the tentative dates, that's when the facilities will be turnkey. Like they'll be able to. Yeah, we'll give, we'll give them full access to it on yeah. those dates. And that's, that's to make sure that we're furnished, the buildings are inspected, ready to go, and fully released to the building principal and operations to operate school in that space. Yeah, we're pressing. Trying to get it done. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know I can call you, Coach. I know I can call you. <laughs> I mean, it, the door is wide open, so whatever the questions are, we'll be able to take care of. All right, if there are no other questions, then we'll adjourn the meeting. And uh, I'd like to thank you guys for taking our time to stay connected and stay interested in this process. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir.